Welcome to Females and Fine Fettle, from Wiped Out to Wealthy. This is where conscientious women entrepreneurs and women living like a boss come to learn about balancing their personal and professional wellness with ease. If you have the enthusiasm, motivation, and grit to make it happen, then listen up every Monday. To be sure you don't miss an episode, sign up for weekly updates at femalesandfinefettle.com. The following discussion is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease. Please don't apply any of this information without first speaking with your doctor. Now, here are your hosts, Ashley Rose and Dr. Michelle, functional medicine doctor, naturopathic physician, and East Asian medical practitioner. Hello, ladies. It is summer here in the Pacific Northwest. June gloom is well behind us. And Michelle and I are looking out on a gorgeous day from the studio at her farm. So with all the festivities and sun-soaked fun that July brings, our theme this month centers around creativity and play. Michelle, how are you nurturing your artistry and enjoyment this month? So my partner and I started straw bale gardening this spring, which I had never heard of, but it turned out to be super fun. We got to pick out a spot with the right amount of sun, map it out with the contours of the hill, pick our favorite fruits and veggie seeds, and then get our hands dirty. We ended up ordering a bunch of seeds online from the Seed Savers Exchange, which is an awesome resource when you're looking for heirloom varieties and really good quality seeds. I feel like one of the most important parts of play and having fun is really about learning something new. It challenges us in a new way, which ignites those creative juices and gets us into that different flow. Once everything was planted, we were super stoked, but after a few days, we started noticing that something was disturbing the beds. We were racking our brains trying to figure it out because it didn't look like typical uh, patterns of animals that we would expect, things like rabbits or a deer or things like that. So we were super confused, but then one morning I was out grabbing some eggs from our ladies and turned to see our pup, <laughs> Baudrillard, or Bo for short, using it as a lookout spot. So he was like right on top of it. Totally not okay. So needless to say, we need to replant a few. As I mentioned last episode, I'm super stoked to be a part of this podcast. It's a perfect creative outlet for me, not only as a like a ladypreneur, but also because I'm an introvert. So instead of talking to people in mass, I can sit here talking to my best friend, but people everywhere can tune in. Pretty crazy stuff. I love it. Well, I have been traveling quite a bit since I left California in late June and have basically moved in with you. So thank you very much. Uh, so we could get this podcast going. This has been and continues to be a really creative and enriching time for me. Eventually, I will have to return home, and I am really excited to continue my fiddle lessons. When I was a child, I played the violin for a time, and I've wanted to pick it up for a while, so I'll be glad to get back to that. But as other creative endeavors take priority for a time, such as this podcast, I am learning how best to make time for all of my interests rather than just giving up on some entirely. So I'll be really glad to continue getting my fiddle on. <laughs> And of course, being outdoors as often as possible fills me with inspiration. But happily, my most gratifying creative outlet of late has been our podcast. In terms of fostering creativity, podcasts are the best way for me to stay in tune with my goals, keep me inspired with new ideas because my subscriptions are 100% catered to my interests and the forum is really accessible. I listen everywhere, on the road while I'm working out, in the security line at the airport, cleaning the house. It's just a great way to get things done while completely empowering me for the future. And it's a really inspired community. I love swapping episodes with my friends and fellow podcast nerds. If you ever have recommendations, please let me know. I cannot get enough. Okay, so back to the focus of this, our first episode. Why is creativity so vital to our overall health and well-being? Yes. Awesome question. So I'm actually really excited we're starting with this topic of creativity and play because this one is one I've struggled with over the past couple years, just because I've, I've put so much energy into my practice and continuing my education. So, you know, this particular area of our character or our temperament is largely related to our second chakra, which is located in our pelvis, just below our belly button. So as women, 
there can be some huge baggage in this area. It doesn't have to be related to, you know, a major trauma, although sometimes it is. But being a woman raised in certain societies, it's really common to have various degrees of guilt or shame that we carry around many times unconsciously. The truth is that we all came from a uterus, from this pelvic region. It's the core association to our development. Our pelvis and second chakra is the center of our feelings and emotions, our pleasure, sensuality, uh, intimacy, and connection. Pretty important stuff. So when there's a lack of creative expression, the energetic flow in this area slows down and we can experience stagnation in these aspects of our life. So what does that actually look like? Well, it might manifest as feelings of in- insecurity, uncertainty, or detachment, but it can also be related to physical things like fertility issues or mood swings or pelvic pain, uh, decreased sex drive or painful periods. I don't know about you, but when I'm overworked or stressed, my creativity suffers big time. Everything else takes priority, right? Who has time to play and let loose when we have to take care of our family, keep a business running, eat well, move our butts, and manage all the little distractions filling in the gaps of our day? Yeah. And if you're like me prior to working with Michelle, I hadn't exactly mapped my chakras nor had much knowledge of them to begin with. So we've linked a great chakra for beginners article on our website that can help you get acquainted with your chakras. So give it a look, see, and see how the chakras relate to cognition and emotions. That way, if they come up again in conversations, we're all on the same page. And most importantly, you can become more in tune with listening to your body and what it's telling you. Moving forward, in what ways can our busy listeners bring more creativity into their lives and health routines? Great. So personally, I have four favorites that tend to work really well for me. Number one, I give myself permission to daydream. I'm not talking all day, obviously, but when we're bogged down with to-do lists, you know, battling the onslaught of emails and trying to figure out how to fit in our next serving of vegetables, it's all too easy to lose sight of what's driving and inspiring us in the first place. But when we give ourselves permission to daydream, we give the left side of our brain a rest and stimulate the right half. This process ignites that creative flow that puts us into that zone that we all crave. It's kind of like giving your muscles a day of rest after a good workout. Without that rest period, we don't recover or restructure our muscles and then become stronger. Okay, so what exactly does daydreaming look like to you? Is it meditating or just taking a moment for yourself or maybe journaling? Yeah, it could include all of those things and more. This is just another aspect of that creativity, right? For me, Uh, Sometimes it's literally just staring into the trees and seeing where my mind wants to wander without judging its path or trying to control the direction. By giving our minds a rest through this periodic daydreaming or simply letting our minds wander, we're able to allow the brain to not only process and retain more information, but we enable it to make new connections and allow ideas to surface that might not have been given the chance otherwise. That's the beauty of neuroplasticity. Our brains have the ability to create new neural networks. Yeah, so the first thing that comes to my mind is just how much time we truly have to daydream, even just a little bit here and there. But we instead fill that space with distractions. So I'm thinking of those times you're waiting for the kids at school events or extracurricular activities, ladies on their long commutes or taking your lunch breaks. These moments when we have idle time to passively reach out for our phones and get lost in social media, emails and any number of feeds, just stop. This is an opportune time to daydream. Make it fun, make it a ritual, knowing you're going into a time when there is space to give your brain a little creative vacation, make it work for you. So when I allow my mind to wander, because I find it difficult to truly turn off, uh, it might sound contrary to what I just said, but I tend to actually keep my phone close, only to write notes of my imaginings. And this is not a time when I'm writing to-do lists. My goal is to just keep my imagination fresh and be reminded of the things that come up to let the flow happen embrace future thinking while living in the moment. 
Uh, I tend to write about my visions of my home, my desires, future experiences I'd like to share with my partner, even thoughtful gift ideas. And in this way, I'm able to be reminded of my deepest desires in life and then check back as to whether I am still on course. Yes. Awesome ideas. Uh, commuting is is the big one for me. I'm so used to my drive, so I frequently find myself on autopilot. Don't worry, I'm a very conscious driver. My second favorite way to include creativity is to practice saying no or no thank you. You might be thinking that this doesn't quite qualify as play or a creative outlet, but here's the deal. It opens up time in my schedule for other activities, which definitely includes creative outlets. This particular tip is a powerful aspect of my personal self-care routine, and I first learned its potency from the esteemed lady boss, Marie Forleo. She calls it riding the no train, and I recommend you buy a ticket or two ASAP. The thing is, most of the women I work with, including myself, have been raised in a people-pleasing society, and we've frequently been made to feel bad or guilty or ashamed if we, you know, disagree with someone, don't want to participate in something, or just want to be alone. I'm of the mind that you can't say yes to one thing without saying no to another. So choose wisely. Yeah, and absolutely make it a conscious act that you choose yourself as often as possible. I strongly believe we can't show up for others if we have not shown up for ourselves first. It's hard to be successful when we're zapped of energy by giving so much of that away to others. So I agree that for many women, it is in our nature to take care of everything around us, possibly even first putting outside life in order before going inside to ourselves. But that eventually leads to burnout and frustration Essentially, I agree that our impulse to please or say yes can ultimately distract from moments when we can expand our own creativity or investigate ourselves and have some fun while we're at it. So for me, sometimes when met with a choice in weighing my options, especially when other people and outside influences are concerned, I have to sometimes engage myself with the question, will this benefit me? And if I choose to say no thank you to others, I rarely feel regret. Exactly. We are totally on the same page. All right. Number three, get your hands or feet dirty. So as I mentioned a little earlier, my partner and I just planted a straw bale garden. There's something so therapeutic about getting in the dirt. If you're not a gardener, totally okay. All you have to do is kick off your sandals and just walk in some grass or sand or dirt or even just some water for a bit. This is called grounding or earthing. You may have heard of it. And studies have shown that doing this regularly can improve blood flow, uh, improve heart rhythm, inflammation levels, cortisol levels, uh, sleep quality. It can help bring balance to our nervous system and reduce the effects of chronic stress. It does this by restoring the electron transfer or the energetic transfer from the earth to our body. And I know there are some skeptics out there, and this may sound a little woo-woo, but regardless of the science or lack of science behind the claims, it just really makes sense to me. We come from the earth and will return to the earth, and I think that restoring the connection there can bring some seriously deep healing along with it. If grounding doesn't sound intriguing to you, I totally get it. What about starting small by creating a little kitchen garden? It doesn't have to be anything extravagant, but maybe just a simple mini garden in your kitchen seeded with your favorite herbs. Think, you know, basil, oregano, or spearmint. These particular herbs are super easy to grow, but you can pick others and get creative with your favorites. By doing this, you'll get your hands a little dirty and you'll have delicious and nutritious herbal blasts to add to your next meal. Yeah, and you can really live anywhere to experience this creative release of getting your hands dirty. Whether you live in a concrete jungle, an apartment complex, you don't have a yard or grass nearby, or you feel really far removed from nature, just like Michelle said, go buy a plant, maybe basil, maybe a succulent from the nearest grocery store, grab a pot or something that can serve as a pot, like a coffee tin or a paint can, hammer a hole in the bottom, drop in that potting soil and dig those fingers in. Yeah, for sure. I remember a few years ago when you made that vertical palette garden you found on Pinterest. It was 
awesome. And it made the backyard so cool. So uh, anyway, my last tip is to explore online courses. One of the best ways to boost creativity is by learning that new skill set or being exposed to new information. It stimulates our brain and actually creates those new neural pathways, which allows for new creative bridges to be made. Online courses are booming right now. So if you haven't had a chance to explore one yet, we've got a treat for you. So stick around to hear about our freebie. So to recap, in order to bring more creativity into your life and health routines, number one, give yourself permission to daydream by journaling or meditating in those regularly scheduled idle moments. Number two, practice saying no, no or no thank you with the added bonus that you're saying yes to your own inventiveness. And then number three, get your hands and your feet dirty. Kick off those shoes, walk through the grass or the creek nearby on your lunch break and start your window garden. Number four, take an online course that inspires your creativity and fits into your life and at your own pace. There are lots of offerings around and we urge you to find the one that is best for your goals. Embrace the lifelong learner in you. Be sure to visit femalesandfinefettle.com and click on episode one to get your freebie. This week, we have Dr. Michelle's online course entitled Creating Healthy Change That Lasts. It goes through the art of really identifying your goal, where you are in the process of change, how to track and monitor your progress, and nailing down that action plan. Don't miss it. Hey, it's Dr. Michelle here, and I cannot wait to meet you back here next week. In episode two, we'll be talking about my favorite natural approaches to boost that sexy brain of yours and clear those creative blocks. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Females and Fine Fettle from Wiped Out to Wealthy, a podcast to fit your lifestyle. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at femalesandfinefettle.com. If you have questions or topic ideas for upcoming episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to tune in next week.